Hello, and welcome to this presentation on ANSYS Workbench Finite Element Analysis. This is a set of five videos on this channel to help users get started. Features of Workbench Finite Element Analysis modeling will be demonstrated. This first video will introduce users to ANSYS Workbench. Then other topics covered will be creating geometries in SpaceClaim, meshing with the ANSYS Workbench mechanical product, thermostructural sequentially coupled analysis in which a thermal analysis is followed by a structural analysis, then structural analysis of a rotating wheel sector with centrifugal forces. Users can work through these demos by downloading the free ANSYS student product that is available for you. In this demonstration, you'll learn about starting the ANSYS Workbench project and dealing with the project page that you see in front of you right now. Note that to start Workbench, we go to the Start button, we scroll down, we find the version of ANSYS that we're interested in, and go down to Workbench for the version we want. Here is the ANSYS Workbench application. We're seeing the project window. The large white space on the right is the project schematic. Over here on the left we have the toolbox, a collection of the various kinds of analyses that you can do. Under the Student Academic License you can see a rich variety of kinds of analyses you could do. Static structural, response spectrum, random vibration, modal analysis, harmonic response, thermal analysis both steady state and transient. You can see transient structural in here. It enables many kinds of analysis. Let's have a look at finding a kind of analysis and dragging and dropping it in the project schematic. This makes this kind of analysis available to us. Note that you could go to Engineering Data and right-click Edit and go into an area where you can select various material models and create many kinds of behavior, such as metal plasticities over here, or looking for hyperelastic material behaviors for rubber-like materials. Under Geometry you can right-click and either go to Space Claim to create geometry or Design Modeler, or you can import geometry that you've looked at before or perhaps browse for a geometry file somewhere on your hard drive. Once you have your geometry selected, you can go to Model, right-click Edit, and that will take you into the Workbench Mechanical application. You can see the M suggesting mechanical. That's where you'll mesh your model, do a variety of setups, then you'll go on, put your loads and supports in place. Supports can also be thought of as boundary conditions, and then go on and check results. The kinds of systems you'll see over here on the left will, in general, depend on the kind of licensing that has been purchased where you work. As an alternative to bringing an entire system in like this, you could go to Component Systems and put your analysis together piece by piece. You could go to Engineering Data and bring an individual Engineering Data cell into your model, so you'll see System B contains only Engineering Data for setting up materials. You might go on and find the Geometry component and put that in a system. Then you could go to, for example, a static structural run and drop it on a geometry cell, which will connect it like this. The engineering data that you develop here could be linked to this engineering data input. And now these two upstream systems control what will go on over here. At this point you'll go on and do your modeling work. You could also go directly to Mechanical Model and drop it on a geometry cell. With this modeling work done, 
you could go to a static structural system and drop it on model. And then all you're going to do is put your analysis controls in, your loads into supports, and go on and complete your work. Reasons for putting systems like this together include building final analyses down here that draw on one set of engineering data, geometry, maybe even meshing and other setup approaches prior to putting loads into a model. These connections can make various analyses work together. Note the links between things. You can click on a link and if you want you can remove it. You can also check on the properties of the thing in your model. Here I can right click on geometry and look at its properties. Over here you'll see a place where I could indicate that I wanted a two-dimensional analysis, although 3D is the default. In a two-dimensional analysis you would have things for structures like plane strain, plane stress, and axisymmetric models. This concludes the introduction to the Workbench project page and how you can select systems to control the kinds of analysis that you'll do and the way that systems will send information to one another.